Hi hey guys, welcome back to another Fallout 76 base build. Now if you haven't already, please ensure you join the Discord, the link is below. We have a ton of Fallout 76 players in there, all helping each other out, teaming up and showing each other exactly where items are being found. So today's base is a bit different. As you can see, I have moved away from the cliff that I normally build at and I'm very close to Watuga, the place I always go to and I've spent a lot of caps trying to get back and forward to get plans. Now, I say different because we're actually built in the Metro Rail Bridge. Now, we've got a junk extractor here as well. That was another reason for coming down this area. We've got a small tent outside with a stash box just for quick drops. If I'm teaming up with people, they can come use that quite easily. We have these walls in place. Honestly, you don't need them. I just put them in to show that you can block this area off using the same budget as I am. Now, this structure here can be a lot smaller if you wish. You can play around with it, it's only here really to give you a safe passage in and out. Now these turrets outside, you do get a lot of wolves down here in Super Mutants, so I've tried to make sure that I was very protected. Now these security doors can now be found at Watuga Shopping Plaza, we found them just after the patch. I'm not sure if they're level based, however we got them straight away. Now coming upstairs, you can see this is literally just a staircase, it's nothing else. As I said, you can make it a lot smaller than this. Just put some turrets to the side, it's very simple. As you come upstairs, you'll see I have a roof space up here as well with another turret. Just looking out over the little bit of wasteland that I've got, as I say, I got a lot of wolves and super mutants here. The wolves are good for food because I'm always starving in this bloody game. As you come into the bridge itself, you can see power armor chassis straight away, electrics in here as well, simple switch, and it puts lights all down the center of the bridge. Now, doesn't take a lot of power to run these, I've had to use two because you can only run three street lights off of one generator. Now I've got all the main benches, sleeping area, everything that you need really for your base. And it's perfect in here because this long corridor acts as a perfect place to just run up and down. So you can put everything on one side or have everything side by side, it's completely up to you. Now at the back, because I haven't built any structures at the back of here, you could if you wish. I've only put a barricade. Now, as you can see, animals are always here. I always struggle with food and water. Since I've moved here, I have not struggled at all. So, for the location I was looking for, I wanted to try and hit three of the main things. Junk, food and water. Water I can't get, as in the big purifier. However, I have got the hand pump and it's working fine. Now, I've also got quite a lot of decent monuments around me as well, so I can get a lot more scrap and get a lot of XP from actually going down to some of the camps. Now I'll take around the back just to show you exactly what it's like. You got a lot of flowers around here as well, which just decide to crack and blow up when you're running past them. Around the back, as I said, very clear. I'll take you all the way around. Now, as you can see, this bit is completely open at the back, but it doesn't matter because the walls are blocking it. You can leave that and use this area to run through. So you can get to the back easily. As I said, you don't need the walls. I've only got them there as a demonstration piece to show that they're there. There is wooden logs. I've already collected this one. You can, so there's plenty of resources around for you. And as I said, you're very close to monuments as well. Now, I want to do something different. I've seen a lot of bases. There's a simple little farm bases and stuff. I want to actually try and build into the monuments. And this is the only one I've found so far that actually works quite well. So let's jump in and I'll show you exactly how I managed to do this and what I've done. Now, as you can see, I've left the extractor and external walls in place and the foundations. The reason for this is I don't want the video to be half an hour of me showing you where to put walls because it's pointless and the walls are optional. Now, I've left the foundations in place. The key thing is to make sure if you're building this bridge, there's a gap above to get in. Now, have the foundations, you'll have to play around with it to make sure you get the levels correct. The best way to do this to make sure you're going to get in straight away is just simply put a simple wall up, a foundation, and just keep putting the stairs in place. Then from there, you're going to put a floor piece off to make sure it actually connects to the bit you want. It will take a little while to get this done, but if you want to build in this area, on this bridge, it's worthwhile taking your time and messing about with it. Now, we'll have to remove these stairs later, because we're going to put some floors in here anyway. But for the time being, we'll leave this in place. You can see now, I've got a clear gap. I can safely get in and out and not fall down all the time. Now, downstairs... We're just going to wall it up as we normally would. Once we get to the top bit, I'll briefly describe what we're going to do. I'll let the video play through to the very end. 
because I don't want to bore you to death, it's very straightforward how to build this. This is more a concept of building into the map itself. When I say building into the map, I don't mean the glitch where you can actually glitch yourself into the map. It's using the monuments that allows you, around you, to actually build into. Now, this is perfect because if you do get a Scorch Beast attack and your base is taking heavy damage, because you're in the monument, it will not take any damage. So that's a key thing if you're trying to take Scorch Beast, etc. I haven't found an area with... A Scorch Beast, which I can actually do this. I am still looking, because Scorch Beast base is the key one I want to try and make. But for the time being, this is going to have to do. Now, I like to set up in an area and stay in here for a long time. And for this base, I'll probably stay here for quite a while, unless I'm trying to make a location base again. Because I like the fact that we're actually in the bridge itself. Very safe, don't have to worry about it. And it can actually drop your budget dramatically. If you only make a staircase up to that you are going to use nothing at all really, you're going to use a couple of foundations, staircase and basically everything else is upstairs, you can just let the place with turrets or as many as it will let you use, don't be scared to use the low tier turrets, also traps as well, They're, they are actually effective and just work off the budget you've got, now up here you can put turrets if you wish, now I recommend if you can use the missile turrets, to get this you need a, a high level defense perk. Recommend boosting them up, get all the turrets that you can. The only one I don't have at the minute is a laser because I didn't really bother with the science. When the respec comes, I'll probably look to try and get them. And I'm also trying to get the flamethrower trap. Now, I thought I had it, but I managed to get a napalm plan instead, which I thought it was, but it isn't what I was looking for. I don't even know what the napalm plan is for, to be honest. If you do, let me know in the description, uh, the comments below, because I have no idea what it's for. I've been racking my brain trying to find it. Now, as I said, if you want to copy this like by like, you have to make sure that you use a roof piece out there before you can put the actual door frame and door in place. For some reason it bugs out. I'm not sure why, it just does it. It's, it's quite annoying. I had to cut quite a large section of this video out because I had to go back and forth messing about with it to actually get it to work. Now, as I said, the stairs that you put in first to check the level to the wall to jump in, you're then going to take them away. Now the reason for this is it can be very glitchy to try and put a floor in place after the stairs are in place using this metal frame. If you don't use a metal frame you probably won't struggle with it at all but remember you need to use stairs to be able to put a floor piece in place. So we're going to take these stairs away. Obviously I've got this floor piece there and you take it away first because you can't take stairs away unless the floor's off of it. Then you'll see now it's still very glitchy. Now if you find this with this try and use the half floors, they seem to work a hell of a lot better than using solid floors. I'm not sure why, it's just it's one of those things in Fallout building, it just doesn't like you not using common sense. Once it's in place, you'll then be able to put your ladders back, your, sorry, your stairs back in place, it'll take you up as you originally had. Now, I boxed all this in, you don't have to box it in, I just like to make it super secure, super strong, make sure nothing can actually hit me because super mutants can be annoying, sometimes they do come around with missile launchers as well. I'm always running about in broken armour and everything else, I'm not the best person to be getting hit by missiles, so I try to enclose this place as much as possible. Also, if I do manage to get a scorch piece in this area, I want to try and protect this edge as much as I can. Now the turrets aren't very good against the scorch beast. It takes a couple of good hits and the turrets are gone. Trust me, we've tried it. If you haven't checked or seen it in play, we have a video of Beast V's base and it absolutely destroyed the steel walls and the missile turrets. It didn't stand a chance. Yes, we could have probably repaired it a lot and maybe got something from it, but it just it absolutely melted it. It was just, there was nothing for it at all. Now again, make sure you put your roofs on as well. You don't have to do this, as I said, but if you want to build it like for like, you need to pop this up because you're going to have your generators on top of one of these roofs. Now, over this side, I have my last turret. I always like to protect the generators by putting little walls up at the sides because I've found that a lot of AI go for your actual generator as well as your turrets. So it just protects that and it means you're only repairing one thing so it's saving you on junk, springs, gears, etc. Now, as I said before, you can use normal turrets if you wish, but I find the missile turrets absolutely melt most of the AI, absolutely destroys them. 
you just want to get rid of them quick. Now, if you want the XP and all the loot from them, make sure you pop one shot at one of them, and it usually gives you all the loot from all of them if you hit one. Now, as I said, we're going to put the generators on this roof. These aren't protected. You can protect them if you wish. There is a bit enough in the budget to put two small walls up there, um, but for this, I didn't do it. Now, as you see, I left the switch in place. Now, I have the streetlight pack. I got that from Harper's Ferry. I think it was 220 caps. I don't use them a lot, but for this, they kind of work really well because this does get quite dark in this section. It's best to look up and make sure you get them right. Now, for this, as I said, I had four lights, so it required two generators. I just used the seam in the center of the floor, wait till I got to the half pipe, as soon as it vanished, moved back and just stuck it in place. Now, I've also got a little connector on the pipe, as you can see now. I'll show you it better in a second. There it is there. That's so you can actually run the cable between all four of the lights. Now, go to the very end one. It's easier to start at the end and work your way back when you're doing all the cabling. It just Otherwise, it turns into a bit of a mess. Drop that in place. Connect the next one. Stick it down. And just run back to the switch. Now, what you want to do next, because you're working in reverse, is connect both of the generators after you've got all the lights on the switch. This just saves cable management. It just means you know exactly where the run is going. The electrics can be very simple, but you can make it hard for yourself as well. As soon as that's in place, you can see all lights work perfectly. Now, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to let the video play through. I'm just going to be placing everything in the bridge itself. As I said, I want to make a bit of a different base because a lot of the bases I'm seeing just now are just farm bases and shacks and little upgrade brick bases. So I want it to be a bit different. Um, let me know what you want to see below. Make sure you join the Discord. This was actually done because of a vote we done in Discord for what video we wanted to do next. And yeah, guys, thanks, and I'll catch you in the next one. Let us play through and let me know your thoughts below.
I go la 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 